Gears and gearboxes can look very complicated, but they all perform just a couple of basic functions. They transfer power from one place to another, or if needed, in a complex machine, from one place to several others. At the same time, meshing gears rotate in opposite directions, so you can change the direction of rotation, and you can change the speed of rotation by having different sized gear wheels. Here I'm using three sizes of gear wheel, one with 60 teeth, 36 teeth and 12 teeth. All of those numbers being divisible by 12, that gives useful and easy ratios. 5 to 3 to 1, that's 60 to 36 to 12. If the motor is attached to the small cog, as here, the large cog rotates much more slowly, much fewer revolutions per second. The cog that the motor is attached to is called the driver. That's the small cog and the large wheel is being driven. The ratio of the speeds depends upon the ratio of the number of teeth on each wheel. That here is 12 to 60, which is a fifth, or the large wheel is going around at 20% of the speed of the small wheel. If we reverse the example so that the large wheel is being driven, you can see here the small wheel goes very quickly. The ratio of the teeth is now 60 to 12, 5 to 1. The small wheel is going round five times faster, or 500% faster, than the large wheel. The teeth on all the cog wheels have to be the same size or they won't mesh properly. So the number of teeth depend upon the distance round the wheel, and that distance depends on the diameter. So if counting the teeth is a bit tedious, then you can get a rough idea of the ratios by measuring the diameters and comparing those. One example that most of us have seen is the gears on a bike. The front gears attached to the pedals are connected by a chain to the rear gear wheels attached to the back wheel. Connected by a chain, it means they both rotate in the same direction rather than opposite directions. Turning the bike upside down and setting it so that the driver wheel attached to the pedals is small and the driven wheel attached to the rear wheel is large. If I turn the pedal, you can see the effect of this low gear. One complete turn of the pedals results in less than one complete turn of the wheel. Set like this, the pedals are easy to turn, but you have to turn them a lot of times to move forward. If we swap those settings round so that the driver wheel on the pedal is large and the driven wheel on the back wheel is small, then we get the opposite effect. One turn of the pedal rotates the wheel several times, but as you know if you've cycled, it also makes it very hard to push. It's important to understand that changing the gear doesn't increase the amount of power of a motor or the user, it can just spread out or concentrate the amount of work that has to be done. In this example, the driver wheel is the grey wheel in the centre. It meshes with a small wheel on the right and a large wheel on the left. These two wheels meshing with the driver wheel are called idle or idler wheels. They're not doing any work themselves, they're transferring the power to the next one along, which in each case is a large wheel. So we've got the driver wheel in the centre, the two idle or idler wheels meshing with that. And then at each end, connected to the pulleys, are the driven wheels. As we turn the motor on, the pulleys both raise the weights on the end of the string. And as you'll see, they started in the same place, and they rise and lift the weight equally. The point I'm trying to make here is that the driven wheels and the driver wheels are the key wheels. The size of the idle wheels makes no difference. They simply transfer the power from one place to another. The key ratio here is the ratio of the driver to the driven wheel, in this case 36 to 60 or 610. So the speed of the driven wheel is 60% of that of the driver. In that example, 
the size of the idle wheel made no difference. But here we've got two idle wheels. The motor is driving the small grey cog, but the idle wheel in the middle has a large wheel meshing with the driver and then a small wheel meshing with the driven. The effect of this combination is to slow down the final driven wheel even further. To calculate the final speed we need to do a little bit of arithmetic. The ratio of the speeds of rotation from the driver to the idler wheel is 12 teeth to 60. That's a ratio of 1 to 5. The ratio of the smaller idler wheel to the driven wheel is 36 to 60 or 6 to 10. So the final total ratio is the two multiplied together. That's 1 fifth times 6 tenths, which is 6 fiftieths, or 12% of the original speed on the final driven wheel. If we change the gears round so that the large wheel is the driver, then we get the reverse of the calculation. You can see how fast the final driven wheel is going. So the large driver wheel is attached to a small idle or idler wheel, which on the same axis is a second large idler wheel, which drives the final driven wheel. The ratio of the number of teeth on the driver to the small idle wheel is 60 to 12 or 5 to 1. Of the larger idle wheel to the driven is 60 to 36 or 10 to 6. Again, multiplying those two together gives us 50 over 6. That's 833%, 8.33 times faster than the driver. Thank you for watching.